Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video, we're gonna be shooting the Orion Nebula from light polluted Chicago. Let's check it out. So we're all set up and ready to go tonight. In fact, we're just starting to catch a few first photons of the night before Orion rises high enough for us to start imaging. I'm excited tonight because it's the first light that I get of 2022 here on January 2nd. So it didn't have to wait too long. It's looking like a beautiful clear night here in Chicago. Uh, should hopefully have no clouds coming through. Uh, it is a little bit chilly. You can see we got our uh, first big snow of the season here. So I was able to get the scope set up and uh, all set and ready to go uh, before sunset and then do some polar alignment once I was able to uh, catch Polaris in the ASA Air Plus. So tonight the plan is RGB imaging from Chicago, which is not always highly recommended. Usually I go for the narrow band from the city, but the Orion Nebula is bright enough that you can see it with the naked eye from a nice dark sky. And in Chicago, even using, say, a smartphone, you're able to pick up just a little bit of the nebulosity uh, using an astrophotography mode. So with a full astrophotography setup, you can expect a nice bright signal, uh, very good against that light pollution. And we'll see how much we're able to get. I'm hoping to go for about an hour, maybe about 45 minutes per filter for R, G, and B. I'll be shooting with my monochrome camera, the ASI 1600mm. Overall, it should be a good night. It's uh, not too cold yet, but uh, I think eventually as I'm out here trying to get some flat frames and things like that for the, uh, the filter changes, it might get a little bit chilly. But uh, so far, just excited to be out here and ready to get some good imaging done. So imaging from the city is its own special challenge. But especially at this season of the year, uh, we don't have very many leaves on the trees surrounding the yard. And so we get quite a bit of light uh, from say the street lights. You can see one over my shoulder here. Now they're not very well shielded and they're also full spectrum LED lights. So it's sending out a whole lot of just white light all across the uh, visible spectrum, which uh, I gotta say is not particularly good for driving either. It's a lot of glare from these street lights. So I'm hoping at some point uh, the city of Chicago realizes they could uh, turn them down in intensity, also shield them so that they aren't shooting the light out sideways quite as much. In fact, this light spreads out all over the yard and it's, uh, it's pretty bad. There's a lot of light getting into windows, people trying to sleep and things like that. It's just uh, not good in general to have that much light coming from uh, these lights surrounding us. Of course, we could do a lot more for urban light pollution overall, but uh, especially this would be an easy fix uh, really to get these uh, these turned down quite a bit in intensity and also to uh, hopefully get some shielding so that they're not shining in our eyes from every angle. All right, well, so far things going pretty well with the imaging tonight. Uh, the guiding was a little bit strange earlier on. They've just been... Uh, the height that Orion was in the sky, but uh, things seem to have settled down a bit. It is pretty cold out there. I was just out doing uh, some flats after the filter change from the hydrogen alpha to the blue. And uh, yeah, glad I've only got one more of those uh, later on when I switch uh, between the green and the red. So uh, a little bit cold. Here's our view uh, currently of the frames coming in. Once again, we're on the blue filter. I'm at gain zero and I'm doing 30 second exposures here. Uh, this is, yeah, not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, uh, but I think I'm really going to be able to clean this up in processing. So see back here, the running man looking good. Uh, here we've got obviously the main part of the Orion Nebula 
The core definitely blown out here, but I've gotten enough of the uh, hydrogen alpha data, which I'm hoping to use as a luminance layer, that'll be able to uh, really get those uh, the trapezium stars uh, highlighted there and keep them uh, under control. Same thing with uh, a little bit of the star haloing that we see here. Uh, not a huge deal, as far as I can tell, uh, for what we're looking to do. One interesting thing to see here is, if we look over on the side, you see these short little little lines. There's a few of them over here. Here's one up here. Those are geosynchronous satellites. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in a video, actually, but when I was shooting the Witch Head Nebula uh, in the, from the Dark Sky Green River, I was able to see quite a few of these. I was taking longer exposures there, so the, the lines are a little bit longer. Uh, but when I was able to uh, process the image, I did a version of the image where I uh, didn't do any sigma rejection, uh, essentially leaving in all of the satellite trails uh, in the image. And it was just amazing to see how many of those uh, satellites were actually moving through the frame. Now, they're not moving very quickly. They're not going through the entire frame over the course of a 30 second exposure. It's pretty short. And that's because they're so far away that they're synchronized with the Earth's rotation. And you might wonder, okay, well, why are we seeing some trailing here? Well, that's because the, the telescope is counteracting the Earth's rotation, right? It's locked to the sky. So it's tracking, say, the Orion Nebula and all the stars here. Those are all pinpoints staying in exactly the same spot on the frame. And behind them, the satellites that are actually locked to my location on Earth, they are appearing to move. They're moving relative to the camera uh, in front of these objects. So yeah, we, we've been able to see here these uh, lines slowly making their way up in the image here. So they are uh, just below the Orion Nebula, as seen from my latitude here at 42 degrees north in Chicago, and they also cut through the chin of the uh, of the the Witch Head. Um, however, in other parts of the world, depending on how far north or south you are, they're going to be going through a slightly different part of the sky. So you can actually tell if you see one of these uh, images of uh, uh, these geosynchronous satellite trails, you can get a pretty educated guess on where exactly that picture was taken on Earth, at least north or south, uh, based on where the trails are going through. Because it's a, a fixed ring of satellites around the Earth, they're up above the equator, and where you are uh, relative to that determines where it's going to be in your sky. So it was kind of a cool little thing that's, uh, that's going on in this image here. But overall, I'm excited. We'll see uh, overall what we get uh, throughout the rest of the, uh, the night here. And it looks like the clouds are staying away pretty well. So uh, I'm excited to see what we get.